Who owns a lot of money and pays big amounts of rent for their car? That's what I thought. After an encounter of renting two vehicles, I have discovered that it is more intelligent and more astute to purchase a vehicle instead of renting a vehicle. Be that as it may, I'm not trying to just put it out there, but there is a big point behind this. The majority of the population is leasing cars rather than buying, and that is a huge ongoing problem because they have no idea how much money they're losing through that action of theirs. Therefore, I am here to talk to you and probably change your mind by pointing out a few things most people don't take notice of before leasing and why they should eventually buy a vehicle. There are three motivations to consider purchasing a vehicle as opposed to renting a vehicle. Think about these things. The amount you drive yearly, the upkeep and the drawn out installments on that vehicle, possible possession, and setting aside cash. So let's begin. People need to buy cars instead of leasing. People have no idea how purchasing vehicles as opposed to leasing will prompt more noteworthy long haul achievement. Monthly lease payments are generally less expensive than monthly car loan payments. However, with each loan payment, you can build up equity for the future when you decide to sell it or trade it in. Buying a vehicle and driving it for several years after you pay it off can be the cheapest way to own a car. The longer you drive it, the less it costs. When when leasing a car, and it's the opposite. The more that you drive it, the more it costs you. So why do that? One reason why the problem of losing, of leasing, excuse me, occurs is because of the miles. Take it into consideration with the amount of driving you do yearly or even daily. With leases comes an agreement of the number of miles you can drive that vehicle. As per an article composed by Consumer Reports named Leasing versus Purchasing a New Car, most rents limit the number of miles you may drive, regularly 12,000 to 15,000 every year. Although you can arrange a higher mileage limit, you eventually need to pay charges for surpassing your cutoff points. This proves the mileage limit that the action of leasing a car gives you. When you need to drive a vehicle as many miles as you want, it's much better to own it. Leases put caps on the number of miles you can drive and charge a hefty fee when you exceed the limit. The same article by Consumer Reports gives a general and real life example. For instance, say you go on numerous street outings each year, you'd effectively surpass the restriction of mileage you're permitted. Through that example, the same article concludes that renting a vehicle is all the more so applied for driving locally. Moreover, if you purchase a vehicle, you don't need to stress over the miles you drive since it's yours. At the point when you lease, you're paying for the deterioration scheme in addition to all the additional miles you put on that vehicle. However, when buying a vehicle, you need to ensure it's all yours and you're insured to not have issues with the more miles you put on it. Another reason why leasing is a problem that people do not notice is that, is that dealers are causing to le are, <laughs> excuse me, are causing a lease to seem less expensive instead of purchasing. That way they persuade the customer to lease rather than buy. There are numerous charges that businesses neglect to make reference to. As per the recently refer referenced article by Consumer Reports named Leasing versus Purchasing a New Car, most rents consider you liable. You'll need to pay additional charges for surpassing what is viewed as typical mileage. You can't change the vehicle since you should restore the vehicle is marketable condition. Any adjustment any adjustments or custom parts you add must be eliminated. On the off chance that there is any remaining harm, you'll need to pay to have it fixed. All you have to record a protection guarantee and pay a deductible. The mileage charge might be for something as basic as a scratch. On the other hand, in the event that you purchase a vehicle, you don't need to worry over what befalls it and protection will be less. As per the All States website, Keep going got to on December 2nd at 12.30 a.m., the expense of protection premium is the buy alternative will cost you $1,460 on normal every year. 
contingent upon the year, make, model, and highlights of the vehicle, water protection will defer, yet will, in any case, be less expensive than if you somehow manage to rent. Lastly, think about these installments. Would you rather have the capability of totally taking care of a vehicle and just agonizing over protection? Or would you rather have the weight of both a vehicle installment and protection at regular intervals? Think about a 72 month, which is just six years credit on buying a vehicle versus the run of mill three year rent, which is three years. For instance, say your installment is 350 on a vehicle you bought under a 72 month credit versus 300 under leasing for a very long time, $25,000 in six years, rather than 21,600. In addition to extra secret expenses, averaging the two vehicle leases, you be around $25,000 or more, and the cycle rehashes itself. Leasing a vehicle may have lesser installments than purchasing a vehicle or renting. Excuse me. In, is the, in the contract, monthly installments, in addition to protection, is really worth it. As credit karma's credit As per Credit Karma's article, Lease or Buy, there are four additional charges on renting a vehicle. There is the acquisition fee, which covers the leasing uh, association's legitimate costs for planning the lease. The security deposit, that could generally be equivalent to one month's rent payment. Early termination fee, in case you may be charged the expense in the event that you end up the rent contract early. The disposition fee, and this takes care of the renting organization's expenses for cleaning and selling the vehicle toward the finish of the rent. And obviously the initial installments, five extra installments. There are multiple hidden fees in a lease contract, but on the other hand, there are none when purchasing a car. Now, after going over the reasons of the problem on leasing a car rather than buying, let's talk about what we can do to fix that. First and foremost, an obvious solution is to buy a car instead of leasing one. You can also make a larger down payment in order for your monthly payments to be as low as they would be if you were to lease. And lastly, companies can promote 0% interest in order to get more businesses and give more options to their customers. If all Americans were able to see how big of a difference buying a car and leasing a car makes, no one would ever lease a car. All Americans would be able to save big amounts of money. However, there are many requests in order for the solution to work, but the three most important ones are, do not let any car, um, any car salesman influence you into leasing a car. After your payments and dates to return the car up, go buy a car and never lease again. And after you buy the car, see the difference between the significant amount of money you save by buying and never leasing. I bet you you'll never lease again. Overall, the current issue is the measure of driving done. The reason is that the vendors make leasing look engaging because of the promoted regularly scheduled installment and the arrangement is to buy to set aside cash and the problem. To recap, we examined mileage, upkeep and installments of renting versus purchasing a vehicle and protection charges. Taking everything into account, Purchasing a vehicle as opposed to renting a vehicle is significantly more sensible over the long haul. In addition to the fact that you save cash over the long haul, however, you likewise have a free rule as the vehicle is yours. Thank you.